The pneumatic cannon, more than just an odd idea, it was a chilling attempt to weaponize the invisible power of air. Imagine a weapon that could hurl explosives without the roar of gunpowder, just a hiss of compressed air. It sounds like science fiction, but in the late 19th century, militaries truly tested the bizarre pneumatic cannon. For centuries, gunpowder had ruled the battlefield, but it came with a flaw. Many explosives, like dynamite, were too unstable to survive the violent shock of a traditional cannon blast. Engineers wondered, what if compressed air could gently launch these projectiles instead? This dream birthed the idea of the pneumatic cannon. Instead of fire and smoke, a massive chamber filled with high-pressure air would release with a sudden hiss, propelling the shell forward. The result promised silent launches, reduced recoil, and a safer way to use delicate explosives in war. On paper, it looked revolutionary. In reality, it was complicated. The biggest champion of this concept was Edmund Zielinski, a Polish-born American military engineer. In the 1880s, Zielinski worked on what became the most famous pneumatic gun project, the Zielinski Dynamite Cannon. He convinced the U.S. Navy to fund experiments, claiming his invention could fire 500-pound dynamite shells over a mile. His design replaced gunpowder with compressed air tanks and smooth barrels. Tests showed it worked at least technically. The shells flew silently, arcing gracefully through the air. But accuracy was another matter. Still, Zelensky believed he had invented the future of naval warfare. The Navy agreed at least long enough to put his weapon on a warship. In 1890, the U.S. Navy launched the USS Vesuvius, a small warship equipped with three pneumatic guns designed by Zelensky. The ship carried dynamite-filled projectiles and became the world's only official dynamite gun cruiser. The cannons fired silently, with only a faint hiss and the rushing sound of air. The Navy tested it along the American coast, and in 1898, during the Spanish-American War, the Vesuvius bombarded targets in Cuba. The attacks terrified enemies, who reported strange, ghostly explosions. But behind the spectacle, the system had flaws. Range was limited, reloading was slow, and accuracy was poor. The Vesuvius was an experiment, not a long-term weapon. The logic behind pneumatic guns was simple. Dynamite could not survive a normal cannon blast. The shockwave would detonate it prematurely. By using compressed air, the shell launched gently, but still carried devastating payloads. Zelensky's shells could deliver explosive charges that rivaled heavy naval artillery. For a moment, it seemed like compressed air might outmatch centuries of gunpowder tradition. But as always, the battlefield is unforgiving. The range was limited barely half of what regular cannons could achieve. Worse, wind made the shells drift unpredictably. Soldiers joked that the only way to guarantee a hit was to aim at the ocean itself. America wasn't alone. European inventors also dreamed of pneumatic artillery. In France, engineer Victor Pop built giant compressed air plants in Paris, some adapted for experimental guns. In Britain, inventors dabbled in similar devices, but the war office never fully committed. Meanwhile, rumors swirled about Russia testing oversized pneumatic mortars. The appeal was clear. Silence, reduced smoke, and theoretically safer handling of volatile explosives. Yet, across Europe, the same problems appeared range, accuracy, and logistics. Moving massive air tanks and compressors into the field was impractical. By the end of the 19th century, most armies filed pneumatic guns under interesting but unreliable. The pneumatic cannon faced a fundamental problem. 
physics. To hurl a heavy shell far, you need enormous pressure. Early air compressors could only generate so much. The barrels had to be extremely long to accelerate the projectile, making the weapons awkward and heavy. On ships, this meant sacrificing deck space. On land, it meant hauling fragile compressors that broke easily. Worse, high-pressure tanks sometimes leaked or burst. Gunpowder, for all its smoke and danger, was more portable and powerful. Soldiers trusted it. Air, by contrast, seemed invisible, weak, and unpredictable. The dream of air-powered heavy weapons was already gasping for breath. Long before Zelensky, legend spoke of Archimedes building a steam cannon during the siege of Syracuse in 214 BC. According to later accounts, the weapon used rapid steam pressure to hurl stones at Roman ships. Centuries later, Leonardo da Vinci even sketched versions of this so-called Architoner. Historians debate if it was ever real or simply an imaginative myth. No archaeological proof survives. But the idea shows that even in ancient times, engineers dreamed of replacing fire with pressure. Whether Archimedes built it or not, the legend gave pneumatic cannons an air of timeless mystery, part science, part mythology. Not all pneumatic weapons were massive war machines. In the late 18th century, the Ghirondoni air rifle gave Austria a military edge. It could fire 20 shots from a hidden air reservoir, quietly and without smoke. Soldiers armed with it could shoot repeatedly, while enemies searched for musket flashes. Later, Inventors like Paul Giffard created elegant CO2 rifles for sport. These successes proved that compressed air had real military potential, just not always at the giant artillery scale. The Ghirondoni even traveled with the Lewis and Clark expedition across America. While artillery struggled, small arms quietly thrived on air. During the Spanish-American War, the USS Vesuvius finally saw combat. In 1898, it bombarded Santiago, Cuba, lobbing dynamite shells at Spanish defenses. Locals described the weapons as terrifying silent shells that suddenly exploded with massive force. But Navy officers noted the inaccuracy. The shells often missed forts and landed harmlessly in fields or the sea. The war exposed the harsh truth. Pneumatic cannons looked spectacular in theory, but were unreliable in practice. After the conflict, the Navy quietly retired the Vesuvius from active bombardment duty, a strange footnote in America's military history. The experiment had made headlines, but not history. When the USS Vesuvius toured American harbors, the public was fascinated. Newspapers dubbed it the Dynamite Cruiser, and crowds gathered just to glimpse its strange silent cannons. Demonstrations were staged, shells hurled dramatically into the ocean with hiss instead of thunder. For a time, pneumatic cannons captured the imagination of journalists and inventors alike. People wrote breathless predictions of a new era of smokeless war. But behind the spectacle, Insiders knew the flaws, poor accuracy, clumsy reloading, fragile compressors. It was dazzling theater, but not dependable warfighting. Still, for a brief moment, it seemed like the future had arrived. Reloading a pneumatic cannon wasn't simple. Each shell was enormous, packed with dynamite, and needed delicate handling. Compressors had to recharge air tanks between shots, slowing the rate of fire. In battle, this meant long pauses, while enemies unleashed rapid cannon salvos. Crews worked carefully, knowing a single mistake could mean disaster. Unlike gunpowder weapons, which could be reloaded almost anywhere, pneumatic cannons demanded constant mechanical support. The system looked impressive on paper, but in real combat conditions, it struggled. Technology often fails not from lack of creativity, 
but because the battlefield shows no mercy for inefficiency. Though the Vesuvius was most famous, it wasn't alone. In America, small coastal defense forts experimented with pneumatic mortars to launch dynamite-filled shells at approaching ships. These installations looked imposing, with massive barrels poking from reinforced bunkers. But once tested, their limitations became obvious. Short range, clumsy maintenance, and shells that wobbled in flight. Other navies watched with mild curiosity, but hesitated to invest. By the late 1890s, improvements in smokeless powder and better explosives made pneumatic systems outdated. The world's great fleets moved on, leaving only a few silent guns rusting along forgotten shorelines. One fatal weakness haunted every pneumatic cannon, accuracy. Unlike explosive-driven shells, which fired at blistering speeds, air-launched projectiles moved slower. This made them vulnerable to wind, weather, and even minor pressure differences. In tests, shells drifted unpredictably, sometimes missing targets by hundreds of meters. Worse, their curved trajectories gave enemies warning as they approached. A weapon that could not reliably strike its target was doomed. Soldiers quickly lost confidence, preferring the proven reliability of steel and gunpowder. Without precision, no amount of innovation could rescue the pneumatic cannon's future. Its flaw wasn't just technical, it was fatal. By the dawn of the 20th century, warfare was changing fast. Smokeless powder, stronger steel cannons, and safer high explosives had solved the problems pneumatic guns were designed for. Armies wanted weapons that were reliable, powerful, and easy to deploy. Pneumatic cannons were none of those things. They required compressors, fragile tanks, and specialized shells. Against the relentless march of technology, they stood no chance. Within a decade, most were scrapped, their parts melted down, and their memory faded. What was once hailed as revolutionary had become obsolete before it ever proved itself in battle. Though they failed as weapons, pneumatic principles lived on in civilian life. The same compressed air technology was adapted for industrial tools, air-powered hammers, and even launch systems for aircraft testing. Hobbyists later built potato cannons and pumpkin launchers, echoing the same physics Zelensky once dreamed would change war. In a strange way, the pneumatic cannon's failure in combat paved the way for peaceful uses in construction, engineering, and even entertainment. The vision of using invisible pressure to move heavy objects safely never died. It simply shifted from warships and forts into workshops, laboratories, and backyards across the world. Today, only a handful of pneumatic cannons survive in museums or forgotten coastal bunkers. Visitors stare at the bulky barrels and ask the same question, did this ever work? Guides explain the promise and failure of compressed air warfare, while historians shake their heads at the bold but impractical design. To modern eyes, the cannons look like relics from an alternate timeline, one where armies might have fought with silent weapons instead of roaring blasts. They stand as reminders that not every invention earns its place on the battlefield, no matter how imaginative. The story of the pneumatic cannon is less about its brief use and more about its lesson. Military history is filled with bold ideas that collapse under reality's weight. Zelensky and others dared to challenge tradition, imagining air replacing fire. Their courage pushed engineering boundaries, even if the weapons never lasted. In failure, they proved that not every invention is wasted. Many failures lay groundwork for future progress. Without these experiments, compressed air might not have found its industrial uses. In the end, History remembers both success and failure 
as part of humanity's restless search for innovation. Stories of Archimedes' steam cannon or ghostly silent bombardments often overshadow the facts. In truth, pneumatic cannons were never decisive weapons. They frightened, impressed, and fascinated, but they didn't change wars. Still, myths cling because they capture imagination. People love the idea of hidden technologies, strange weapons, history forgot. Separating legend from truth is what makes studying these cannons worthwhile. The reality is they failed, but the myth ensures they're never fully forgotten. And perhaps that's why, even now, they remain irresistible stories for those fascinated by strange weapons of the past. The tale of the pneumatic cannon is a reminder that history isn't just shaped by victories, it's also shaped by experiments that failed. From Archimedes' myth to Zelensky's cruiser, the dream of harnessing invisible pressure was bold but doomed. Yet these odd cannons leave behind a fascinating story. A moment when air nearly replaced fire on the battlefield. And sometimes, the failures are more intriguing than the triumphs. If you'd like to explore more strange weapons and forgotten experiments, stay with us. The past has plenty more secrets waiting to resurface.